Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. Thank you for your word which you have given us, Lord. Thank you for your mysteries, Father. Thank you, Lord. As we hear your word today, let this have a deep root in us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are helping us to understand your word, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making it easy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, you're speaking through Sister Jocelyn today, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Jocelyn. Thank you. Praise God. So praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you put your videos on, please? Please. Can you put your videos on, please? Danny, Alistair, Nicole, Ezekiel, Joshua, Joanna, Noah, Nisha, Lisa, Sarah. Oh, that is Nisha, Sister Nisha. <laughs> Praise God. Today I'm not going to start if the videos are not going to be on. Joshua. He'll come in two minutes. <laughs> so I don't know what is happening behind the name. <laughs> maybe maybe they're all going to change the t-shirt or something now. No, he just finished <laughs> bath and he's just coming. <laughs> God. Thank you, Jesus. I think now school also has started. Tuition, school. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm going to go on some basics because there's many new children coming, but I'll be asking questions, okay? Okay? So are you ready? Yes. So what is law? L-A-W, law. Wait, Daria, wait, wait. Can you repeat the question? Ah, when you... <laughs> okay, what is law? You know, you should pay attention, okay? You put your video on first. No, I was not there. My okay, was now you put your, okay, now put your video on. Danny, put your video on. Okay, tell me what is law. Law is a universal principle when anyone yeah, evolves in it, yes. the, the result is always, is always the same. same. <laughs> okay, Joshua, did you see and say or did you say it from your heart? I, I I could see that you read from the screen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, Joanna, put your video on. Yeah, tell me. Law is an universal principle. If anyone involves in it, the result is always the same. Okay. Praise God. Okay, what is a law? A law is a universal principle when anyone involves in it the result is always the same yes sister frida same sister yeah you have to put your video on only then i will know how you're saying <laughs> <laughs> no no it's by heart the law is a universal principle anyone who's involved in it will have the equal result yes now, many times when the Bible says about, for example, Joshua 1.8, it says, uh, you know, do not allow the book, this book of the law to depart your eyes. Okay. Now, uh, in other scripture, we say, we see that anyone who's under the law is under curse. And uh, people get so confused. One place it says, we should not allow this law to depart us. 
another place we it says that we are no longer under law but we are under grace and people get confused what is the difference between the law mentioned here and the law mentioned there okay for example i'll show you on scripture put galatians chapter 3 verse number uh, 10 sorry one minute i'm opening okay anybody is it related to romans uh, 8 verses 2 okay so what is romans 8 to say it says when we are in jesus we are in the law of life spirit, spirit of life in jesus but uh, when we are in the other law we are in the law of sin and death so is it because we are shifting in from when we are in unbelief we are shifting into the other law and that is implied to us okay good okay uh, put that 10th uh, put 10th verse see now this verse says for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them but no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith and the law is not of faith now it is talking about the book of the law okay the law is not of faith the man that do it then shall live in them praise god now why does the scripture says anybody who's under the law who is who who are of the works of the law are under the curse and other other place it says that we have to meditate on the word the law day and night remove this remove the screen remove this screen i actually do not want to come here but i don't know how i came here okay remove the screen see who gave me the who spoke to me before this sister filled us book filled up okay okay now when i took the definition of law okay what is law law is a universal principle when anyone involves in it the result is the same correct law is a universal principle that's why it's not just by hearting the definition we have to understand the definition law is a universal principle anyone who involves in it the result is the same now can you give a, a example for this uh, definition a natural example we have learned the gravity yes the law kathi correct law of gravity law of gravity, law law of gravity. yes and Now the law of point. aviation when i throw a, a pen or a book or any object it will go down correct yes yes whether no matter the color of the person the height of the person the language no matter who that person is good bad doesn't matter the law of gravity works for everyone the same that means anybody who involves in the law of gravity the result is the same so what is law a law is a universal principle when anyone involves in it the result is always the same in the same way when the bible the bible talks about the law of moses the law of faith the law of love the law of sin and death okay now when you take the law of moses anybody who tries to keep all the law will surely fail at one point if they fail the result is what curse correct now did jesus give did did god give the law through moses 
Yes. Yes. So, if a person keeps all the law, will he be blessed? Yes. But is there anybody here who kept all the law and never did any mistake? Who never no. committed any sin? No. 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 So, according to the law, if a person continues according to the law of Moses, if a person continues in the law, and if anyone breaks the law at one point, then he is under curse. Correct? Yes or yes. no? So anybody who involves in the law of Moses, then the result is the same. The result is curse. That's why the scripture says, Christ has Galatians, what we saw, 3.10, we saw 3.11, we saw 3.12, we saw. What is 13 saying? Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Put that 13th verse, again put that Galatians 3, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now see this. For as many as are, can you put the NRSV? Yeah. 10th verse. For all who rely on the works of the law are under curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book. If anybody is observing the law of Moses, they have to obey everything. They should not even miss one point. First is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by law. So there is not even one single human being can be justified before God by keeping the law. Because everybody has broken the law. If you break the law, what is the result? Curse. Because what is, if you see generally, a general name law is, law is a universal principle. Anybody involves in it, the result is the same. It's a general term. But there are different laws. If you see the law of Moses, and if anybody who involves in the law of Moses and try to justify by keeping the law, everybody will come, up, come under, according to the law of Moses, everybody are under curse. Nobody in this world is, is justified by the law. Every one of us, according to the law of Moses, we all are under curse because there is no one who kept all the law. There is only one person who kept all the law. Who's that? Jesus. 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 Yeah. Put, Jesus. The, put the scripture in you know, Okay. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the one who is righteous will live by faith. Means what? Nobody can be justified by keeping the law. But now you and I can be righteous by believing in what Jesus did. I'll come back to that point and explain to you, okay? But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the work of the law will live by Enoch, are you there Enoch? You put the video on, only then I will know whether you are there or not. 
Okay. But the law does not. I did not read it. Ah, okay. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the work of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. So, according to the law, we all come under curse. Which law? Law of Moses. It's a universal principle. Everyone who's, uh, who's under the law by default come under the curse because none of us have none of us have the power to keep the law because we all had sin in us so we all come under curse but the good news is christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written curse is Everyone who hangs on a tree. So there is a law in the Old Testament that is the law of Moses. And now because Jesus died for me on the cross. Now, as I told you, if I commit sin, the consequences is what? Curse. What did Jesus do? He took our curse on himself. We are supposed to we are supposed to take the curse on us. We are supposed to be punished. We are supposed to be put in, in the in the hell. But what did Jesus do? In, we, we broke the law and to break and if we break the law, the law of Moses, then the consequences is what? Punishment, curse. But what Jesus did, he did not commit sin. In fact, Jesus did not come to many people think Jesus. Even the Pharisees thought Jesus has come against the law. No, no, no. When Jesus was coming and speaking love and mercy, the Pharisees were thinking, according to the law, you should not steal, you should not kill, you should not do this, you should not do this, you should not do this. If you do this, you should be stoned to death. You should be punished. That's what the law of Moses demanded. The law of Moses demanded that if a person commits sin, he has to be punished. But Jesus is coming and saying, you, a person who was caught in adultery, a person who was a robber, a person who was a sinner, he, what did he do? He said uh, he showed mercy and he said, uh, he said, your sins are forgiven. So everybody, the, the, the Pharisees thought, this Jesus has come to violate the law. He did not come to violate the law. He came to fulfill the law. Jesus kept all the law. He never committed any sin. There was no sin in Jesus. But at the same time, Jesus knew that there is no man in this earth has the ability to keep the law because every man has committed sin. Everyone has the sin nature in them. So Jesus, who has not committed any sin, if he has not committed any sin, then he is not supposed to be punished because he is righteous. Who will come under curse? Only the one who has broken the law will come under curse. But Jesus did not commit any sin, nor did he break any law. He kept all the law. He did not commit any sin. But then he took, even though he did not commit any sin, what did he do? He took our sins on himself. That's what uh, put to Corinthians 5 21. For our sake, he he means what? Who? God the Father. God the Father made him. Him means whom? Jesus. For our sake, God the Father made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin. Jesus did not commit any sin, nor did he break 
any law, nor did he violate any law. He did not come against the law, but he came to fulfill the law and keep the law. The only person in this world who came and who kept all the law is Christ. And that's why the Bible says that for our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. What is the meaning of the word righteousness? Right, yeah, standing, right, right. With, right, right standing with God. Right, standing with God and having the same nature of God. Excellent. Diana, you gave the correct answer. Wow. Very good. Everybody gave me half answer. Okay, Ella, you, what do you want to ask? Um, like you said that Jesus is the only one who didn't like uh, who like didn't break any law. But what about Mother Mary? Mother Mary also called uh, Savior, no? She also needed the Savior. Because oh. only, only Jesus was born with the incorruptible seed. Only Jesus was born uh, through a virgin not with the human seed. Everybody else was born with the human seed. Praise God. Okay, now, for our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Put uh, Romans chapter five, verse number 12, please. Uh, come down, uh, put 19. Okay, yeah, 19. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Because of one man's disobedience, who's that one man? Adam. Adam. Because of Adam's disobedience, everyone who was born from Adam, it doesn't say committed sin, but it says that made sin. Okay? That means every one of us, when we were born, we were born with the nature to commit sin. We all were born with the nature to commit sin. Just like how one man's disobedience, we all were made sin. We commit sin because of the nature in us. In the same way, by one man's obedience, that is Jesus obeyed all the law, he kept all the law. Even though he kept all the law, he took the punishment. He took our punishment. He took our curse on the cross. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now, um, Joanne, Joanne gave me a wonderful uh, answer. When I asked what is righteousness, what did she say? She said to have right standing with God and to have the very nature of God. Okay? So, righteousness means to have, to have the right standing with God and to have the nature of God. Now, every one of us who were born from our mother's womb, we were born with the nature to sin. Yes? Will a six-month-old baby commit sin? Yes. yes. So yes. because we already had the nature to commit sin, that's why we act the action called sins. But the good news is 
just like how because of one man's disobedience many were made sinners because of one man's obedience many are made righteous righteous means what when i was born i was born with sin nature but the day i am born again the old sin nature is taken and now i have given the new nature of god that is righteousness that's why the meaning of the word righteous means what to have not only right standing with god but having the nature of so can anybody become righteous by keeping the law no if i try to keep the law then the result is what curse so by default we all come under curse because none of us kept the law we all have broken the law we all have committed sin but because christ became a curse in our place even though he did not commit any sin even though he did not break any law but he became a substitute for us and he took all our curse all our punishment on him and because he took our curse our punishment on him even though he did not commit sin because of his obedience when i believe in what jesus has done that's when i receive his righteousness as a free gift now what if god god is not going to make me righteous and only forgive my sins for example huh? if he is only going to say okay uh, kathy your sins are forgiven He has forgiven all your sins. You went and asked forgiveness. You confessed your sins. Your sins are forgiven. You are washed with the blood of Jesus. You are repented. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, God, and Savior. You are forgiven. He forgave you. But what if He is only forgiving you and not giving you the nature to live right? Remember, when we were born, we were born with sin nature. if he is only going to forgive me but if he is not going to take that sin nature out then what will happen sin even if i am forgiven sin again yes even if i am forgiven i will not have the power to overcome sin it's not that just because i'm righteous i won't commit sin but now i no need to commit sin because i have the nature of god the power of god in me to overcome sin so god did not just say i forgive you god did not just say your sins are forgiven but what is he saying i have not only washed you with my blood but i have taken the old nature the sin nature from you and i have put the new nature in you that's why the definition of righteousness is to have right standing with god and to have the nature of god in me put that ephesians 2:10 please to put from the eighth verse put from the eighth session where is justify standing ma'am in in the explanation which you have mentioned now okay where did you see the word justification no it is not there i'm asking in your explanation is after this process a justification or along with this process what is okay okay what is the meaning of the word justification uh, that god is erasing every, all uh, all my all my sin and making me justified like clean slate so I, now the children will give you the answer yeah there yeah what is justification my case tried but found not guilty uh, Anybody else? Found not guilty. Anybody else? Joanna, put your videos on. Why are you, why are you, everybody is putting? Hey, Thomas, why are you putting your video off? Tell me what is justification? Joshua, what is justification?
Having right standing with God. Huh? Having right standing with God. Then what is righteousness? Uh, oh, they are both are different. Now only he is realizing. Yeah, Thomas, Joanna, Jerica. Thomas, put your video on, please. Yeah, tell me what is justify. Go, go down, go down, completely go down. <laughs> Mom, clean Lisa. slate, man. Huh? Clean slate. Your case is tried. Uh, yeah, Dairia, say that again. My case tried but found not guilty. Your case is tried but you are not found guilty. Justify means just as if you have not committed any sin. So that won't be equivalent to righteousness. Why? If your case is tried and if you are not found guilty, then you have right standing with God. If your case is tried and if you are found guilty, you don't have right standing with God. Because you are justified, you are righteous. If you are not justified, then you are not righteous. You are a sinner. So, so justified comes before righteousness. Yes, yes. Uh, that is what I was asking, where it will come, before or after. Yeah, but I want you to understand what is justification. Only when you understand, you will get it, no? Yeah. Now, a person who is under law is trying to justify by the works. He's trying to prove I am right because I did this, 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 this. When a person is trying to justify by the works, I did this, I prayed, I did that, I fasted, I gave to the poor. If a person is trying to justify by the works, then you are under curse. Because the Bible says all your righteousness are filthy rags. Nobody can justify. Nobody can say, I did this, I did this, I did that. No. We all will fail. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So nobody can say that I am perfect because of the law. My, so when my case has been tried, when I'm found not guilty, I'm justified. Now, my case is found not guilty because I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. Understood, sister? Thank you, ma'am. Understood. Praise God. But this question made everybody yeah this question made everybody start recalling the teaching again <laughs> yeah now tell me mariana what is justification sister nikin has put for you in the chat you can see and also say justified means means yeah case tried and not found guilty all are sleepy Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, when you say this, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law by becoming a curse in my place. Will you understand what you're saying? Did you understand? According to the law, if I don't keep the law, I'm a sinner. If I don't keep the law, then I'm under a curse. But even though I'm under a curse, what did Jesus do? He took my sin on the cross and he paid the price and he has washed me with the blood and he has given me his new nature. That's why, that's why, uh, put that Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 10 quickly. Can you hear me? Yes. What scripture? You're going to ask that question? What happened? It's scripture? I have to go down in a sudden. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 10. Okay, now see this. For by grace you have been... I'm not going to go in detail. We have learned this already. By, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. Nobody is saved with their own doing. Nobody is saved through your own works. It is the gift of God, 
not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Now see the 10th verse. So we are what he has made us. I'll say again, for what we are is not based on what we did. We did. It's not our it works. It is not our performance. It's not what I did, not my action. But what we are today as born again, what we are today, it is what he made us. What did he make us? He made us, he made us righteous. He has given us what? His nature. He has given us the right standing. For what we are, for, sorry, for we are what he made us. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now, I am not saved because of my good works. I am saved because of his grace. There is nothing I can boast. I did this, I did that. No, no, no. It is only what he has done for me. Because he paid the price for me. And righteousness is a free gift. Now, because I am made righteous, because he has put his nature in me, because I have God's spirit in me, because I have God's love poured in my heart, because I have the very nature, very character of God in me, because I have the mind of Christ, because I have the spirit of God residing on me, he has created me in other way, he has recreated me. We are new creation. We are completely new creation. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Means what? Now, I no need to continue in sin, but I am equipped, I am given the power to do good work. If anybody is continuing in sin, that means that person is cut off from the grace of God and still living under his own effort, his own willpower. If a person is still lazy, if a person is still uh, in sin, if a person is still in bondage, means that person is not tapping into the, the, the power that God has given. Okay, I'll, I'll give you another one word that will make you understand. My right action will not change my wrong thinking. If I try to change my action, my right action will not change my wrong thinking. But my right thinking will change my wrong action. So when I begin to renew my mind and I start to speak, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when I begin to speak, I have the spirit of God in me. I have the mind of Christ. Now, what does the Bible say? The Bible say we have to think on these things which are holy, which are pure, which are perfect, which are of virtue. Which scripture is that? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, right? 8 or 9. Can you put that in? You know? Whatsoever to that scripture. Yes, 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 it, yes. It ah, finally, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commandable, is there any excellence? And if there is anything worthy of praise, now see that word, think on these things. What is that? Think on these things. Because when my thinking changes, then my action changes. When I think on these things, then keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Not the peace of God, but the God of peace. That means what? Now, I have the nature of God, but if the nature of God has to um, 
if the nature of God has to manifest, then I have to change my thinking. Earlier, when I was, you know, earlier when I was born from my mother's womb, I had the nature to sin. I did not have the power to overcome sin. I did not have the power to live righteous. But because now God's nature is in me, I have the power to live right. I have the power to live righteous. I have the power to be good. Correct? Yes. So if I have to see my action, but still we see bad actions, right? But we, we, but we still see sin in our life, correct? It's not, the sin is there not because we have the sin nature. The sin is there because of an unrenewed mind, because of a wrong thinking. But the good news is we no need to be slave to sin anymore because now because we are born again, now because we have God's spirit in us, now because we are the righteousness of God, now because we have God's power in us, we no need to continue in sin, but we have the ability to overcome sin, but it all depends on what other words am I thinking? Praise God. Did you understand? Yes, no? Yes. yes. Praise God. Yes, Sister Filda. Um, I have a question regarding to Romans uh, yes. chapter 10 verses 9, uh, 9 and 10. That says, mm. uh, believe in the heart and confess with your mouth. So how do some, uh, if someone is saying only that verses and not doing all these things, how do you explain to that person? That is salvation, Sister. Okay. Now, when a person is believing in his heart, confessing with his mouth, believing in the heart means what? It's not just confessing, but believing in the heart. Believing yeah. what he did or believing what Christ has done for me on the cross? Believing what Christ has done for me on the cross. So the moment he believes, he is saved. No, for example, the man, the thief who was, uh, you know, who was hanged on the, uh, uh, next to Jesus. What did Jesus say? Tomorrow you will be with me in paradise. Why did he say? Yeah, he, he believed that Jesus was God. Because he believed, what did he say? When you come, he believed in the res resurrection of Jesus. He believed in the mercy of Jesus. Yeah, remember me when you are raised. Correct. So yeah. he believed in his heart and he confessed with his mouth and he got saved. He was saved not because of his action. He was saved because not what he did. He was saved because what Jesus did. He believed in what Jesus did. So or all this day, happening yeah. at the same time. Yes. Justification, righteousness, all is falling into place immediately at the right. You are righteousness instantly when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord God and Savior in your heart. That very moment, you are made righteous. Anyone who's in Christ is a new creature, new creation. All things old has gone away and all things have become new. Okay. But the problem is with your unrenewed mind. You have the Holy Spirit. You have God's Spirit in you. You have Holy Spirit in you. So you have the power to overcome sin. You don't need to be any more slave to sin. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Praise God. I actually wanted to be, I actually wanted to, uh, you know, teach on something else, but it went somewhere else. Praise God. <laughs> so you have to come tomorrow again. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I don't know. I, if, I, if there is no meeting, I'll come. Uh, every Tuesday, I have a meeting at uh, 8 o'clock. So, yeah. Any doubts? Any question? Those who are new, I don't know. But those who are coming already, you will understand. Because you have already learned this. Correct? Those who are new, don't worry. You go and listen to the teachings. You also will understand. Praise God. So what shall we do? Yes, Zaidia. We're checking. Okay, any questions? Yeah, Kate, you want to ask something? 
Okay, she is in her own world. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so shall we do the closing prayer? Yes, okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you became a curse for us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you have redeemed us from every curse by becoming a curse in our place. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your love. If not your love, we would have had no hope. We would have had no, we would have had no future. We can't even imagine. If you would have not chosen to take the place for us on the cross, we can't even imagine what would have been our future. We can't even imagine the eternal damnation. Thank you, Lord, you did not leave us forsaken. You did not leave us. But you took the most difficult path for us and you died for us. And today, we can boldly confess, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law by becoming a curse in my place. Thank you, Lord, for this freedom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jocelyn. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good revision. Yeah. I think old, old timers, new timers for everyone, it was a good session. <laughs> Praise God. Is this timing not suiting you, Jocelyn? Praise the Lord, sister. What, sister? No, I was just asking whether this timing uh -huh. is not suiting you. Uh, yeah, I, I could see a little drowsy. And, yeah. <laughs> Should we make it earlier? Uh, for me, this time is perfect. Okay. Yeah, let's can't hear you. Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the uh, Lord. I feel it low. Praise the Lord. What happened? My internet is a bit low. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Now we can hear. Yeah. Uh, you were telling me to put my camera on, right? That time okay. I had joined <laughs> on the phone. That's why. It's okay. It's okay. it's okay. No problem. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I am wondering in UK the internet is not good. Okay. <laughs> I think India is now becoming much, much better now. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See you okay. all. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you too. Bye. Yeah.